What's going on, my loves? It's Knowledge Butterfly. I am um, doing a second video because I just today got uh, this book right here called Creative Visualization. This book was actually written back in 1978 is what the publishing said on it, I think. Yeah, 1978, that's the year I was born. And uh, it's really amazing how the universe works because how dope is it that I actually walk into half price books and find a book that was um, published during the year that I was born? That is, it's really amazing that that happened. So I literally started reading it today because for me to find this book, I knew automatically it was something that I was supposed to jump right into because I was about to leave half price books. I had picked up another book. And it was very similar to the, the Subtle Energy book and the Chakra Bible book I had. Even though it had some other details in it, still it was like, okay, maybe this is a book you can get later if it's still there. However, I wasn't really drawn to it because I was going through like almost every chapter just to see if I wanted the book. But I turned back around and this is the book that I saw and I said, wow, let me see what she's talking about and... I knew, I knew this was a book, so I put the other book back. And oh, um, um, even though I, I, I jumped right into it, I'm making sure that I did send you guys peace, blessings, and abundance because I'm not sure if I said that part. I always want to send you guys out peace, blessings, abundance, and love. Always send that love out there too because we all need love. You know what I'm saying? We all need to feel love and we all need to be, um, be love. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, what I'm only, uh, about 20 some pages in 23 pages in and already <laughs> I have done one of the exercises. What I can say about this book, um, is that it starts off automatically just pretty much giving you exactly what you need, that juju you need in order to 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 you know feel inspired and just want to go out and and start you know living what you're reading not just reading just to say you read something and you have the knowledge who gives a shit what if you are not utilizing that knowledge if you're not incorporating that knowledge in your life what's the point of having it all in your head so um right off the bat is 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 beautiful so before I get into the exercise, the reason why I'm doing the video is because I want to tell you one of the techniques that I just did. Um, I was literally like, I could feel y'all, y'all. I could feel the energy moving through my body, like my hands. I was like, when I got up, I was dizzy. Like, I was like, oh, I should have laid down for a little bit longer because my body wasn't quite ready to, to go because my spiritual um, body... Um, my energy body was just so like still, you know, still going. It was still feeling that that visualization and that visualization and that energy from that visualization. Um, so first things first, uh, the book just starts off getting right into it. Um, which when I say getting right into it, I mean right into it where she starts talking about the basics of creative creative visualization. And um, creative visualization is, is the technique of using your imagination to create your reality in your life. So I know that you've heard plenty of us people who do YouTube channels or YouTube videos about um, being conscious of your thoughts and how your thoughts can create your reality and um, how thoughts are energy and how everything is energy. That's what this book is, is, is also saying. However, not only is it saying those things, it's also giving you good techniques that you can utilize in order to put into practice, in order for you ad to adopt it in your daily practice. So just like you get up and you brush your teeth every day or, or you know, you bathe or shower every day, you eat every day. So that's creative visualization. To me, it's kind of like eating. It's like you're, spirit, you're spiritually feeding yourself um, because you're, you're spiritually feeding your, your mind, you're feeding your heart, you're feeding all your chakras, and you're aligning them so that you can create uh, your wildest dreams, the things that you are not, can't even fully imagine what's going to happen. You know, you can, you can dream it, 
However, when it happens, it's even better than you could have imagined, okay? So, um, yeah, that's what it basically starts off talking about. Just uh, use, you do, doing creative visualization exercises in order to create the reality that you want instead of the reality that you have been creating that you're not so happy with or you want to change, right? Um, another part, let me see. It was a um, particular quote that I really, really liked in here and I wanted to say. So here it is. It says, every moment of your life is infinitely creative and the universe is endlessly bountiful just put forth a clear enough request and everything your heart desires must come to you it didn't say maybe come to you it didn't say should come to you it didn't say could come to you it said must come to you and the reason why that's so powerful and why that and why that is so true is because my heart everything starts with a thought all energy is is um not all energy all physical energy started with the thought it started in the ether we still we have thoughts that because we're constantly we don't which i am working on getting much better with it by observing my thoughts but we think so much so we have so many ideas and thoughts out there in the ether and um the reason why some of them have not come to fruition and, and we don't see the physical manifestation of it is because we put those ideas out there, but we then we came back with the old, oh, but, but that can't happen or they'll never happen or all these negative thoughts. So we literally defeated ourselves before we've even built on that, before we even put in the work. And by work, I don't mean necessarily the heart physical, physical work. I mean the the creative work in it, the positive work into it, the, the affirmations into it. Okay. So, um, that's the, the first thing, just knowing that every thought is energy. And so you put that energy out there and the way that that energy is manifest is through your, um, the way that you you feel about it, the emotion that you put behind it. So if you also put positive emotion behind it, meaning you you're feeling the bliss when you're visual, um, well you're feeling the bliss when you think about it. You also put a visualization like when you were a child and you would you would daydream about or just imagine all of these things, you know, like you wanted a dog or whatever it is that you wanted. You would like imagine it and you would play with like your dolls or you will pretend that they, that that whatever the toy you had was the object that you wanted. You know what I'm saying? And it's getting back to that imagination, getting back to being able to visualize. And visualization comes from your first eye, your third eye chakra, your brow chakra, whatever you would want to call it. That's where that comes from. That that the being able to see things in more of a imaginative stage with it not being here not seeing it with the two physical eyes it's not allowing these two physical eyes to prohibit you from getting everything that you want so um the concept of the book or the premise of the book so far is starting out with giving you information like i said about all energy being um all thoughts and everything in this universe is energy Everything physical is also energy, of course. And so if everything in the universe is energy and we are energy, then of course, um, as I've talked about before, it's law of attraction because energy is magnetic, okay? So you attract whatever energy you're putting out, that's the type of energy that you're going to get back because it's magnetic. Now, according to how much uh, momentum you put into that thing, and that's, that's why... Uh, visualization is so powerful and I'm going to explain to you sh um, shortly why it's so powerful um, and how it increases your momentum but according to the momentum of it is it, that's going to determine um, the rate that is going to come back to you so if you're if you're half ass and maybe you do, you do a visual you you'll vis do your visualization technique this day but then you'll go by three four days and not do it then your momentum is going to be slower because we already know that every all every um minute that we're awake in this particular physical rim we are constantly using this if we have not gained um control over or better management 
of it, of the uh, mind and how to silence the mind and how to let ourselves truly just be. That's why we have to focus on working and being in the moment. However, these visualization exercises can definitely help you in being because when um, I start going through the exercise and I talk about my personal experience, just doing it for this very first time um, and, and how I could feel the energy, how I could feel my inner being, I could just feel it vibrating is, is a beautiful thing. So, um, basically saying all that say is that the, the physical form is, um, is followed by the idea. The idea comes first or the thought comes first and then the form. It's just like, um... You might be thinking, ooh, you know, I'm hungry. I need to cook something. That's a thought you put out into, you know, the universe. And then uh, either you go pick something up to eat and get that food um, or which brings it into a physical form or you cook something and bring it into physical form. And people might say, oh, well, that's not creating. Yes, it is because you created it first with your, with your thoughts. If your thoughts hadn't told you were, you were hungry, not saying your stomach wouldn't, but if your thoughts hadn't put put it out there that you were ready to eat, you were hungry, then it, you wouldn't have followed it by, by, by the food being manifest or getting the food. Okay. So, you know, as above, so below, so below, uh, as below, so above. And that is what's so powerful about, uh, Slater wants to go back outside. He, he absolutely loves going outdoors. I know Slater, but I can't let you go back out right now, sweetie, because you have a he has a tendency to not want to come back, and his mom likes men before dark, okay? So, again, whatever you put, at, put out in the universe will be reflected back um, at you. That is why we say that um, people are our reflections, that we're, we are all each other's reflections. So, the type of person or persons that are around you most of the time are direct reflections of yourself. So when you're complaining about that person and speaking negative about that person, and um, just know that that's your reflection, boo. Boo boo, that is your reflection. That is your mirror. And if you don't like your mirror, if you don't like what you're seeing, then you need to work in, in inside. You need to work in yourself laughing at the cat. But you need to work in yourself in order to change that thing so you can begin to like it. I actually had that conversation. That's another reason why it's beautiful that I got this book. Um, today, I had to drop Heidi off at the train station or whatever because she's flying and doing her, her jet setting thing and just being the badass that she is. She is a pole instructor, so she teaches people how to do pole, and she is the most awesome pole Um instructor I've ever seen and I, I hear her with her clients and how she talks to them and keeps them like inspired and ready to go like she, she's really really cool with that and she teaches me a lot for when I start having clients and things for doing my healing and everything so um she just she's really really cool she has her clients come to her home just like how we'll be doing um but anywho's so me and her were having a conversation while I was um riding with her to drop her off and we were talking about how a lot of times um complaining is something that we tend to do and that and i have talked about this before is because we've been conditioned to always look at the negative of stuff I always think the grass is greener on the other side to not uh ever really look at the good things that are coming out of our lives and the positive things that are coming out of our, out of our lives we are taught to focus on everything that we perceive as being so bad so negative so you know such so everything's a challenge in our lives right everybody in our life nobody nobody is nobody is uh up to par is how we kind of look at life we we look at ourselves as being good perceive ourselves most of us perceive ourselves as being good like you know we do good things for people so we should get good things back however if we were honest with ourselves we would be able to see that everything that's happening in our lives is the story that we've created and that has to do with the junk that's in our head and that's um a reason why i did the video about you know the the mental clutter that we all have in our heads and how we need to to um basically purge that in our computer in order for our physical um, universe to change. Our inner universe has to be cleaned out first. So, um, anywho, we were talking about that and how we were how you attract everything 
that's on the outside of you is, is attract is um, attracted to you because of the things that are going on in the inside of you it um, think of it like your body which it truly is it has an energy field around it and it's shaped like an egg just like you are in your mother's womb um, first the sperm meets the egg so you go into the egg that egg starts to expand as the baby starts to expand and um you know the baby is is starting to form into uh from an embryo to a fetus and you know or really from a zygote embryo and fetus i think is how it goes and um the the egg is what protects it the egg is look at the egg like the magnetic field around that baby that is protecting that baby from any harm coming not just physical harm also spiritual harm now even um even though it's also the protected it can be weakened by the way you think about yourself the emotions you feel like if your emotions are always um sadness and depression and anxiety all those things are weakening that energy field that egg that is around your body that is protecting you from the outside elements okay um it's just like even look at this physical body it is protecting our organs from outside um elements from it being crushed or harmed because they're more they're softer than this actual shell so um or this physical body so that egg magnetic field around you is the same thing you are literally sitting in the womb of the universe even though you're on this physical plane and we're looking at this physical body your spiritual body is in the womb of the universe so all this think about we have way more atmosphere and space than we do physical objects or solid objects right it is way if you look up in the sky you see way more darkness than you see stars same thing with the sky when you look up the sky you look in the suns in this direction but everything else is space you might see some clouds but everything else is space or ether you know so think about it that way you're literally the cosmic egg sitting in the cosmic um universe okay and your magnetic field of energy that around you is it is, is emanating it's emanating your emotions so if you're if you're if you're emanating if from the inside you're producing okay from in the inside if you're producing sadness you're emanating sadness so you're you're sitting a beacon out like a call out um like you're a ship passing and you're sending a call out to other sad ships that you're sad so you're going to attract a sad individual in your life or a person that's a person that is going through the experience of sadness and if you're feeling angry and you're emanating anger you're going to attract somebody who also is emanating angel angel anger it is the law of attraction However, if you are filled with bliss, like your your the magnetic field around your heart, the heart harmonics coming from your heart in my Dan White. Um, did I say his name right? What what did I call this man? Dan Winter. Why am I calling him White? And your my Dan Winter <laughs> is um is at the state of bliss, so it's experiencing joy and. And, and and peace and harmony and balance then that is what you're going to emanate out into the universe so guess what you're going to attract that same thing in return so that is what this book is talking about now and that i've kind of broken down what it's talking about the very first exercise that came up was talking about a and this is just one of the simple exercises in creative visualization so this is the very first one that was in the book as and um what i love about the book it says at the beginning you can either read this book the whole way through and then come back and reread it and start doing the exercises or however you choose to do it or you can read the book slowly which was the first suggest suggestion read the book slowly and stop when it came to an exercise and complete the exercise I initially felt like I want to read this book slowly and I want to do the exercises as they come unlike some of the other books where I was 
reading most of it and taking in the information that way versus me feeling it. And it's a totally different experience when you're feeling it and not just knowledge. That's part of that emotional intelligence that I talked about in my last video. Okay. Now, creative visualization um, exercise number one. This is what you first start out, out doing. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do, you want to get in a comfortable position. Um, I'm not going to... I just want to make sure I'm on the page. You want to make sure you're, that you're in a comfortable um, place first where it's quiet and peaceful, where you can have some time to yourself. So if you're at, if you like to want to try to do this um, during your breaks at work or at lunchtime or something like that and just go in your car or go somewhere outdoors where it's not a lot of people that congregate around, feel free to do so. However, you need to allot yourself five to 30 minutes to do this exercise. I think I did, I wound up doing about 30 minutes and I knew I was going to take some time with it and really delve deep into it because I really had been um, working on exercises before with the power of now, which was being able to be still and feel your true self, your true being, which is another exercise technique that I'll tell you about. But let me get on this one first. Um... I, yeah, let me get on this one first because I started this one. So I'll start this one and then I'll tell you the technique that actually helped me help make this easier. All right. So after you have gotten yourself to a comfortable place, you want to make sure um, comfortable and quiet place. You want to make sure that you're in a comfortable position, whether it be in a chair where you can sit uh, um, straight up or comfortable, feel like you, you're relaxed um, or you can lay down on your back which is the way that I, I prefer. I prefer to lay down on my back. But it, like I said, if you have to do it at work or something like that, um, you could like lay the seat down in, in your car somewhat or however you want to do it, just as long as you're comfortable, all right? Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to begin to relax, relax your body completely. And the way you do that is you start, you start from relaxing from your toes, all the way to your to your scalp. You want to relax every part, every inch of this physical body. So what you do is you visualize and you start to think about, this is with your eyes closed. You visualize, visualize and you start to think about your toes feeling relaxed and you feeling energy in your toes, you know, relaxing and just flowing perfectly. Um, Causing a perf um, causing perfect peace in that space. You feeling the peace throughout your, every inch of your body as you visualize that particular part of your body. So then um, now you start thinking about your feet. And as I'm doing this, it's actually starting to happen to my body. So excuse me if I start to feel like a little ooh. But um, then you move on from your toes to your feet. And I actually think of the soles of my feet as well because, you know, we have chakras there. Okay? And then the top of your feet, they're all just feeling the energy and um, being able to feel your body relaxing in that area. Your ankles, you want to think about your ankles, visualize your ankles, and you want to think about your ankles relaxing and the energy flowing properly there. Then continue going all the way up your legs, go to your knees, so your calves, your knees, uh, your legs, your thighs, even your private area, so you want to feel the energy flowing there. And we already know that's where your root chakra is anyway, that kundalini energy. So you definitely want to feel it there. And uh, your buttocks, you want to feel it there. And um, your lower back, your abdomen, um, knowing again, it's lining up and going up your chakras, you know, your seven major chakras at this point. Uh, to your chest, your, your hands, you want to feel the energy. And I talked about that before, how you can activate your solar plexus in one of my other videos. Um, I think it was in um, either the brooms, um, incense and herbs um, video, or it was in the one about the color meditation wheel. It was in one of the, one of the two. I know I recorded those on the same day. Now, you want to, again, keep working your way up. You want your neck. You want to feel like your face, your lips, your nose, your eyes, just all your face, your ears. You want to feel the energy emanating all the way to your scalp. You want to feel your scalp feeling like, you know, it's someone just massaged it or whatever. You want to feel that energy, okay? Now, I know I went through each, each um, almost each area, and I did that. And your fingertips, I meant to say it too. 
The reason why I did that is because I want you to understand how important it is for you to feel um, relax in your entire body. There shouldn't be one place in your body that feels tense or, and the reason being is because you'll start getting in your brain and you'll start thinking again. Cause you'll, your, your thought will go from you trying to relax and then, um, from, from you trying to relax to, to you thinking of that tense area. So then you'll start putting the energy into that tense area and then you'll start manifesting and magnifying that particular, um, area that's feeling tension versus you magnifying your visualization, your thought. Now you're doing all of this before you start to visualize the thing that you want. Okay. Now she says that you probably want to start off with something simple that you feel you can achieve. You can definitely go ahead and start that route. However, I have been working on, um, visual visualization techniques, um, as well as affirmations, as well as meditation, as well as, um, quieting my mind exercises for over doing all of them together probably over a month maybe a month and a half so i wanted to take it to the next level by incorporating and putting it all together basically and that's what this does now while you're um while you're thinking about everything flowing up your body you want to breathe very slowly and very deeply you want to inhale and make sure you're inhaling from your abdomen. Like, you know how singers, they always say they want them to sing from their gut. That's where that, the, 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 that true voice comes from. It's a reason why they say that. So you want, to, you want to breathe through your abdomen where your feelings start to flow up to your heart, right? You want to breathe into there. Inhale through your nose. And then hold it for a little bit. Then exhale through your nose. However, you want to do it very slowly. Okay, and then very slowly. And then you wanna hold each one just for a little bit, as long as you can, as long as it's comfortable. Then don't try to do, I'm gonna do two seconds, three seconds, whatever. I always tell people, go with what's comfortable, comfortable for you at that time. Because what happens is, if you try to rush it and you just try to go by, the book told me to do this and you're not quite there, then you won't truly relax. So it'll defeat the purpose of breathing, doing the, the deep breathing in the first place, all right? Now, one part I need to bring it back to when you're thinking about, thinking about relaxing each one of your body parts and, um, or places on your body, what you want to do, once you get to your belly button, you want to start counting down from 10. So once you hit belly button, then you start counting in your head 10, 9, 8, so on and so forth, all right? Now, after that point, after you get to one, you should feel really deeply relaxed. You should feel like... You might feel your body vibrating. If you don't, don't look at it like you failed. That's the thing. We always want to compare ourselves to where everybody else is. And I already told you that I have been working on since the power of now. So this is in October. And so, yeah, it's been about a month since the power of now. Actually, I think I got it at the end of August. So uh, almost um, a little bit over a month since the power of now. I read that book and I started incorporating those um the technique or exercise in the book where it's like I said, quieting your mind so you can actually feel the silence that's in you, your inner being, because you'll feel absolute bliss and peace when you do that, right? So for me, I might not have been doing it every day. However, I would definitely make make a conscious effort to do that. Even if I'm not doing the laying down thing he said do before you go to sleep and when you wake up, when I when I would be sitting here, I might stop myself and just start to, to do breathing and calm myself and start to feel that area or cooking or whatever I'm doing I started trying to make it more of something where I don't wait and say oh I gotta wait to bedtime or I gotta wait till I get up you know because that's putting it off do it when you think about it right now at that moment and you'll you'll make sure that you do it every time it won't it'll, then it'll become habitual and it'll be like clockwork and so you'll be more in tune and in touch with yourself that way so I'm saying all that to say is you may not Feel what I felt and that's okay the more you do it the 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 better it'll get the more in tune you'll be with your inner being and like I'm still fine-tuning my instrument so you know you'll get to that point and then it'll just be levels to that shit so you'll start at, at the point where maybe you're not feeling it but you're able to visualize it however but once you're done after doing your visualization exercise you might still feel like you know a, a really good experience like 
a good, a good um, joyful experience, a blissful experience, like a ah, moment, you know? So, like I said, don't beat yourself up. Don't compare yourself to me or anybody else. Go with your flow. Go with where you are, okay? Now, like I said, after you feel deeply relaxed is when you want to start to imagine that thing that you want to manifest. So you could be wanting to manifest a car. You could be wanting to manifest a better relationship with your spouse. You could be wanting to um, manifest a better relationship with your children. You could be wanting to manifest your dream um, job or your, your dream um, occupation or entrepreneurship um, gig. Because I don't like to call those jobs because when you're... When you're doing something on your entrepreneurship, and, and I don't mean all, everybody who's an entrepreneur is doing something they love. However, the person who's really doing the, what they were purposed here to do, your divine purpose, that's a totally different experience because it's not working because you're doing something you love and you're doing something you were actually put here to do. So, yeah. So, anywho, whatever you're going to visualize, start to visualize it, okay? Now, once you get the image in your head, you want to play it in your head like it's a movie, Okay, you want to play it in your head like it's a movie that includes having dialogue. So you come in contact with other people and you and you can visualize you having a harmonious conversation. Okay, that type of thing. Like if it's something you want to because it could be that you want to reconcile something with, with people as well as you're working in um, or you're doing that thing that you love at the same time. Okay, now as you after here's the thing. As you are doing this, this is the best way you can start off the dialogue. You want to you want to have affirmations in your visualization, okay? Not just the dialogue. So the first affirmation you want you can um, start it off with. You can come up with your own, which I again just started this exercise today. So the more and more I do it, I know I will come up with something that's individualized for me, that's tailored for me, okay? So you would say something like. Here I am spending a wonderful weekend in on the beach. What a beautiful vacation. You know, I'm having. I am having. Notice that I use the word I am. I am is some is very powerful when you say it. That's why you don't say say it when you're talking about negative things. The I am is supposed to be used for something that you want to manifest in your life, that you want to create in your life, not something you do not want to create. So again, I'll repeat it. Here I am spending a wonderful weekend in the mountains or a wonderful weekend on the beach or a wonderful weekend, you know, with my family. What a beautiful vacation, all right? Or if it's something where you're trying to um, work on a relationship with someone, you can say, I now have, again, positive affirmations. I now have a wonderful, happy relationship with whoever that person is, period. We are really learning to understand each other or overstand each other. Because we have a tendency, the reason why that's such a powerful statement is because we have a tendency to talk about, oh, this person is this and this person is that. And our, my relationship with them is horrible. We have a tendency to focus on the things that we are dealing with at this present moment, which I get we're supposed to live in the present. However, with visualization, this is you working on or creating, not working, you creating the, the, the um, actual outcome you want, the actual type of relationship you want, the actual job you want, the actual life you want. I like that word, brother, the actual life you want, okay? So what I did is I said that at the very beginning, all right? Then I started to play the movie in my head of what I wanted to, to, to see, what I wanted to create, what I wanted, what I wanted to be, okay? And after I spent about 30 minutes in that lovely movie, then I ended it. This is how you end your visualization. So you, you begin it with the positive affirmation that I gave you. You can either say it aloud or you can say it silently. I said it silently. Okay, it's up to you because even if you say it silently, it's still a thought. It's still energy, remember? Now, to end the visualization, you want to say a firm statement. And here's an example. I went ahead and used her example to end mine. And this I actually said out loud. It says, this or something better now manifests for me. 
in totally satisfying and harmonious ways for the highest good of all concerned. The reason why this is a firm and a powerful statement is because you're leaving room for something different to manifest that's even better than you could have imagined. If you do it at like close ended and say, this is, um, this is what I manifest for my, for me. You're saying that only this, there's nothing else that can come in and be better. There's nothing that can be modified by the universe to make it even better than you could have imagined. So you're closing yourself off to infinite other possibilities. Remember the universe is, um, is full of untapped potential. Un, un, when, and why I say untapped potential and why it's called infinite potential is because it has not come into form yet. It hasn't become this physical vehicle, um, been put in this physical vehicle yet. So it is literally infinite potential. It's like all these presents, like all these Christmas. We'll use that analogy for people who uh, grew up like I did in Christmas and you just um, been excited for whatever presents you're going to get. Thinking of it about all these presents that you may want for your birthday or for Christmas or whatever. That's really what the universe is. That is where all the, um, all the gifts are, where all the presents are, you know. A anything that you could ever imagine is there. And you can have it, however, it is how you react to everything that's going on in your life. And it is um, how, you, how you vocalize it and it is how you perceive it. So if you focus more on what you want to achieve versus what you don't want to achieve, then guess, what, guess which one you're going to get. The reason why we, we have been getting the things a lot of times in life that we don't want is because that's what we put our focus on. So I'm going to tell you about my experience now that I've just read how it goes. So I lay down on the bed, my loves. I did the whole thing that I just talked out to you, started thinking about and visualizing my full body relaxing from my toes to my scalp. And I can feel the energy moving automatically. Like I said, I have been working on um, on that for a little while now. And as I counted down from my belly from 10 to 1, I was in the most relaxed state. And from there, I said the positive affirmation at the beginning. And the affirmation was for what I wanted. It wasn't the one she said. However, I did utilize the format. However, I didn't say what she uh, said. I said something more along the lines that had to do with my healing practice that um, that I'm manifesting, that I'm creating. So, anywho, to make a long story short, I started visualizing everything from the how it was going to come into existence and... Um, and just seeing the movie play out, me tell, telling um, the people that were in my movie, me t telling them how beautiful and how the universe worked and aligned me perfectly with the person that um, is, comes into to aid me, to link up with me, to aid me in um, building up that particular part of my life. And me actually doing a healing session with a client and then me doing a healing session with a family member and how that turned into other things as well. And the, the energy was so powerful. The life force energy, y'all, was so powerful. My whole body was vibrating and I still feel remnants. Like I still can feel part of it right now. It hasn't come all the way down. It has not. And when I got up, like I said, after I finished, I was like, okay, I'm going to get up because I wanted to shoot a video. I was like, oh, I want to do a video because I wanted, I wanted to share with y'all. I wanted to share with y'all because it, the experience was so beautiful for me. Like I'm tearing up, y'all. The experience was so beautiful for me. I, I knew. I knew I had to share it with y'all. I had to. So, um... I got up and I was like, oh goodness, I should have waited because I didn't quite have my foot in because that energy was still so powerful that this body wasn't ready to start moving. So I, I you know, shook my hand some, like, you know, shake some of that, some of that off and everything. And it was just great. It was the, it was the most 
rewarding um, visualization exercise I've ever experienced. You know, um, I have a vision board as well, which is a, another great tool. And you can actually play those pictures out. That's why it's a good thing to have those pictures because you can make those into a movie so that they're in motion and not just something that's still. Um, wow, I was going to say something else. Hold on. Um, <laughs> it was something else I was going to say to you guys. It just slipped my mind. But I will recall it. Even if not in this video, I will recall it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I wasn't even really intending for this video to be that long. I just, like I said, I it was so emotional. Oh, another thing I'll add. You want to feel the emotions. Like, you want to, that's what makes it so much more powerful. That's what magnifies it, the emotion, right? Your heart will. So I felt the emotions. I felt the emotions when I was given the healing session for my client so I could feel it coming through my hands. I felt it when I was doing the healing um, for my family member who was going through something. And I just felt the resolution in their body and, 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 they, and I, they verbalized it to me like through the script. Like it, it just all flowed. You're writing your own script. And it felt so beautiful. And right now, both of my ears feel like not hot, like people like be like their ears are burning. It just feels like tingly. Everything feels like the un I know the universe hurt me, and I sent out a powerful magnetic um, message. You know what I'm saying? And the momentum on it is so powerful. Um, if I didn't talk about momentum, let me get into that real quick. What I mean about it is everything you add to it. So let's say you do, you do, you just do affirmations. So you might just be get up every day, say your affirmations, and it's become habitual, just like you have if you still drink coffee. Um, every morning you drink coffee, or you might start off with drinking water. Whatever it is, you incorporate it in your everyday routine. So you make sure you say your affirmations daily. It could be before you get out the car, before you walk into your job. You say your affirmations, but you don't use visual visualization. You're just saying it. You don't use feeling. You're just saying it. That makes it less potent. Okay? It's just like the ingredients in like um, in in marijuana, you know, and weed. If you might have the the uh, the cannabinoid, but if you don't have the THC in it, you're not going to receive the high. You it'll make you feel hungry. You might have some of the effects, but it won't it won't be as potent. You know, it won't really take you there you know it's think of it like that so you're just doing the affirmations you haven't put your feeling into it your emotions into it which is the the um the wheel which is the weaver of your physical existence it helps um accelerate it you also are not um putting great being grateful in there i made sure and i didn't bring this point up in my visualization i made sure that i gave thanks and i was and i really express being grateful and it was coming from a sincere place it wasn't me just saying it oh just because it's something i want i will i experience um express gratefulness because i am grateful for the universe for everything it has already given me and for the things that are to come so i make sure that i express being grateful to the universe and grateful for the people who um assisted me in getting to the point that i i am in my visualization okay um, and then the other thing that I talked about, again, of course, visualization. You want to be able to see that thing. So you want to be able to feel it, see it, taste it, touch it. You want to be able to feel all your senses when you are visualizing. That is what um, increases the momentum, makes it move faster. And um, that's how it comes back to you faster. That's how you um, are able to accelerate it, I should say. All right, so I will definitely keep you guys um, in the know and informed about what's you know going on with my visualizations, how I've grown the techniques, and as I continue to read this book, I will also give you other um, techniques as well. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about before I close, I talked about reading The Power of Now, and this is the exercise that I did before getting into this to get me to the point where I was able to totally relax my body and feel the energy. So the book is by Eckhart Tolle. He um, 
basically talks about we are not our mind, which Buddha, people who are Buddhist, um, and people who practice, um, people who practice Buddhism, I said, like to say, pregnant that called them people who practice Buddhism or Hinduism, um, do have, um, especially Buddhism. They, um, I shouldn't say especially both of those particular doctrines do um, have a, an inner and overstanding of this particular concept. And that's knowing that your mind is not who you truly are. The mind is fed and ruled by our ego is, is literally being ran by our ego. And until you um, get an understanding and an overstanding of the fact that you are actually the soul that lives within you're that spirit that's within that, that silence that what you can feel, but you know, doesn't talk back to you really is what you feel till you can actually truly get that. The mind will continue to be the ruler of your, of your destiny and the ruler of your, of your body and the ruler of your, your physical universe, the creator of that, which is creating chaos most of the time. Well, which it always is creating chaos. Let me just be honest. The only time your mind does not create chaos is when it becomes a tool like for the creative visualization. So what Eckhart told the exercise he gave was in the AM, when you get up, before you jump out of the bed and before you fall asleep, lay down in the bed, lay on your back and you just start to feel energy moving from your feet all the way up to your head and at first you might you might not feel any energy but the more that you do it the better you will get and and that energy will just grow and you'll start to feel it so you'll be able to literally think about your knee and then automatically feel energy uh, think about your left knee and automatically feel energy moving around in your in your um, left knee that's also another way to heal yourself and I did a video talking about um, a practice you can do with healing yourself so look up that video as well um but anywho's so once i got better at doing that exercise it makes a lot of sense that the universe brought me to this book next because i'm definitely getting a lot of angel numbers that are speaking to me like 911 speaking to me being so close and 911 is not what you think it is but me being so close to manifesting the things that i want and um, how I just have to continue to hold strong on it because this is the, definitely the time right here, right now, that it is just bubbling up and brewing like some witch's brew and it's almost ready. It's, and it's literally, uh, it's literally here. It's almost tangible. It's here, however, it's not, you know, yet tangible for me to physically touch it, but it's here. And so I just have to keep pushing and keep staying positive. It keeps telling me, stay positive. You're on the right track. Stay positive. You are on the right track. I'm getting bells and whistles from all over the fucking place. It was a squirrel just throwing. I just heard like acorns or something being thrown at the house. I was down here and I was reading part of the book and I was, you know, getting myself together because I, I had to bring myself back. Um, and away from my ego, which was trying to distract me from what is about to come because something big is about to happen. And so um, I just heard some acorns, something falling, hitting the house. I go out on the deck and it's a squirrel. I, 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 I didn't see it initially, but I, acorns kept coming down, kept coming down. I was like, it is something in that tree, probably a squirrel. I look up and I see the squirrel just doing this thing, knocking down acorns to get his food or whatever. It was so super, like, I love nature. It was super interesting watching or whatever. However, it was kind of like, you know, to me, like a wake up call from the universe saying, get out of your head, get out of your, your head. What's happening now in the present? Look at this squirrel doing what it's supposed to do. It's not worried about this. It's not stressed about that. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. So I went and I fed the cats and then I went up to, to my room and I start doing this creative visualization exercise. You can do the exercise every day or as often as you feel you need to do it. However, every day is the is best best thing to do. You can do it multiple times a day if you want to, just so you can work on the of on filling your energy in your body and letting go of everything else, being able to quiet um, down everything else that's going on in here. So like I said, this video is longer than I plan on it being. However, I do not mind because 
it is definitely something that's beneficial for myself um, by sharing it with you guys and, and, and by sharing it, I really hope that it's beneficial to you as well. Actually, I trust that it's beneficial to you as well because I know that we are manifestors. We are creators, you know, of our own destiny. We don't have to beg, plead, or pray to anything outside of us to get the things that we want. You know, we get that by our positive um, way of... Um, a positive ways of thinking, of feeling, and of being. You know what I'm saying? So on that note, I'm going to end this video, my loves. I want to send you out love as will always out into the ether. Take that, take that, take that. You know what I'm saying? And my ditty, peace.